Hey everybody, welcome to the Futurum Tech Podcast. I'm Daniel Newman, CEO of the Futurum Group here in beautiful Santa Clara by the Bay at Marvell's California main office. They don't call them headquarters anymore, but you know what, that's because the company's expanded so much it has presence all around the world. I'm gonna be joined today, we're gonna be talking about generative AI, we're gonna talk about a lot more, but uh, I'm talking to Raghib, and uh, Raghib, welcome to the show, how are you? Thank you, I'm doing pretty good. Hey, you did a great keynote this morning. I uh, appreciated you getting up there and Thank talking you. to us. It's been a year. You know, I, I did really love Chris's slide that showed one year ago and six days when um, Sam Altman tweeted about, uh, you know, basically check out our new thing, yes. <laughs> ChatGPT. Think about that, a year. Now, if you look at like the curve, the law of diffusion of innovation, you look at transformation, like, you know, from like the printing press to like the telephone and like thing, like the, the, the generation to generation evolutions are huge. Now in a year, we've seen like 7,000 iterations, 500 new competitors. I'd love to get your kind of just take on the overall, like what's happened in the last year and, and, and what's going on with generative AI. Yeah, as, as you correctly said, the, the this whole world has pretty much changed in the last one year. What has happened in one year is is generally is like a decade, right? it's, or, or maybe more, because uh, um, the, the transformation, technology transformation takes time, but that is the point, main point about this generative AI. Um, it is it is causing so much disruption in the in the overall um, infrastructure, in, in the overall world, I would say, the way things will be done. And uh, the need, the hunger for performance is driven by this, so it is going to disrupt pretty much every aspect uh, of the way um, the infrastructure are built uh, because the the focus on the performance and efficiency is there. Are, are you using it at all? Any, any, any tools? Oh, really on my, in my personal life, I actually, um, not only have uh, I use myself, uh, and I, I like the voice interface uh, in ChatGPT, so I use it a lot, but I also encourage my kids to use it, and before they were using more like a you know search engine, um, I said, no, 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 establish a relationship with them. I said, what do you mean by establish a relationship? I said, you know what, just talk. Anything you wanna talk, just talk. And now I think they are getting it where I make made it mandate any question you want to ask anybody first ask chat gpt then ask anybody else yeah. and and it's it's kind of eye opener for them well it's really interesting to see i mean obviously things like empathy and and and, and the deep human sort of condition is is going to be a little harder to emulate although with agi and stuff i don't know it, it could get pretty interesting but what i will say is in terms of like information flow the rapid improvement of its ability to sort of multi-turn and can you know create these kind of continuous interactions of high quality uh, feedback has re been really impressive. And by the way, not just ChatGPT. I mean, there are so many options. You look at all the models, all the tools. You want it written. You want images. You know that is true. It, it's it's been incredible, but it's been a big driver of business for Marvell. You were so well positioned in this particular space, and to some extent. I mean, you knew it, but you almost didn't realize just how well positioned you were. Yeah, so this is one of those things which we always believe that data is going to drive the needs of the infrastructure. And we always believe, and we, we could see data is growing, you know, everybody is generating so much data, and that's what we talked last year. And that is why we believe to achieve the full value out of this data, you will need much more accelerated infrastructure. Now, of course, we have been building these capabilities for a long time, but now uh, uh, you know we are in the in 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 the middle and uh, center of this thing where where AI actually driving the need of infrastructure so much so um, that uh, you know everything has to accelerate at a much faster pace. Yes. So talk a little more about that, uh, Raghav. Talk about accelerated infrastructure. That's been the big highlight of this event. Of course, you're moving towards cloud optimized silicon for AI. There's going to be that. That's coming down the pipe for yes. for Marvell. But the accelerated infrastructure is here today, and in yep. the data center, it's been what? It's been like a double every quarter in terms of revenue for the past several quarters. Everyone's asking how fast can it go. Yes. Um, you you have to build, and you're kind of answering that, if not directly, indirectly, yes. by continuing to, to, to optimize. So what is this accelerated infrastructure? So Explain. yeah, so um, uh, if you look at this, this these all these models needed for AI, these are really complex models, but the, but the intelligence, the value of this model is dependent on how many parameters it has, 
has and how complex of a good relationship between those parameters. To achieve that, you really need a, a different scale of compute capability, and not only a single engine compute, simple, simple, single server compute capability, but also these models are very large in size, do not fit in a single AI processor or GPU memory. It is spread over multiple AI server. In fact, it is spread over multiple nodes in the network. So then you need to process it in parallel. As a result of that, you need to move a lot of data you know, back and forth. And that is why the performance of how quickly can you train these models or how quick, quickly can you extract you know, inference out of or, or value out of this model depends on the performance of the entire uh, infrastructure. That is why, um, as we explained earlier today, the infrastructure which is being built to serve the need of these uh, AI processing are completely different than a traditional data center. These, that's why these are called the accelerated infrastructures. Right, so so this is this is where we are actually uh, in the front of center of this. So there are two component of this accelerated infrastructure. One is compute. You need a specialized compute, either GPU or or specialized compute for AI processing, which is custom silicon, where we work with the hyperscalers. And the other very critical part and equal, uh, you know, I should say that uh, the, the value in in this two pillars of this accelerated infrastructure is the inter the connectivity. So the the connectivity is like a high bandwidth, low latency um, switches, um, as well as optical and copper interconnect. And Marvel actually has been um, investing in developing those capabilities for, for for years. In fact, we have 20 plus years experience in in data center compute as well as uh, connectivity. Yeah. So. You know, we've been talking a lot about kind of, does this mean the whole data center game changes? And I think this year we've seen the gold rush has been all about data center, you know, hardware and infrastructure. Like, there's kind of like this AI boom and, and Marvell's been a beneficiary because you have certain infrastructure that's required. There's been a very small number of other companies and most people know who I'm talking about that have been the outsized beneficiary of this. And then over time, I think you'll see it sort of, it'll change a bit as we see more inference and training maybe the, the exponential inference and the, the, the more linear training growth, but I, I, there's an argument that smaller models will create an in, in exponential growth of training as well. But you know, you seem to be in the right place. It seems that there's a requirement for new data center architectures almost from the ground up. Talk a little bit about how Marvell is enabling this new architecture. How are you, what are you offering to the market to make this happen? Yeah, so uh, definitely. So as I said, there are uh, you need uh, this specialized infrastructure, what we call the accelerated infrastructure, and of course there are two critical pillar of these infrastructure: compute and and connectivity. Uh, so when you look at the various architecture, there are two types of network architecture out there. One are those data center built on based on the GPU based compute. The other one is the custom AI silicon based compute. But if you look at the overall architecture, uh, whether it's a GPU compute or the custom uh, AI compute, they need to have a very high bandwidth, low latency network. So Marvel actually is a leader in providing those optical interconnect, uh, which are you know they are called the PAM4 interconnect. It's like a right now 800 gig type of connectivity um, they provide and going to 1.60 to to 3.2T uh, for for the connectivity. Which is fast. That is really fast, and and it is it is doubling very fast. Also, the cadence of improvement is also need is also very fast, and then uh, there are also uh, active uh, Ethernet cables, uh, AECs, uh, which is like a copper connectivity, but for the shorter range distance, um, you can use those. So Marvel has those products too. Um, in in addition, uh, there are lots of uh, the things around it. So for example, when you have a, a GPU or AI computer, there are uh, the pre-processing and post-processing needed, and there are value of how you connect um, the the various memories or storage with the system because at the end of the day, the only compute and connectivity is not going to solve your problem. You need to connect memory. You need to connect. connect you need to do pre-process. And Marvel has products in in all those those areas as well. Especially we have a, um, a very uh, huge investment and initiative going on in CXL, where which allows near memory compute, which is more of a pre-processing for these. Uh, these type of solution. So, so if you look at, we have a very comprehensive solution 
for all kind of connectivity including optical interconnect including switches because these switches are also you need high radix or high bandwidth switch with a low latency to connect these these uh, optical interconnect so we have that so we have every aspect of the connectivity as well as we play in the compute side by partnering with I, with our hyperscaler customers who are building their own custom compute and this is where our partnership actually plays a critical role yeah and and, and as we sort of wrap up here you know I, I i really think it's important and i sometimes think the market doesn't fully appreciate this is you're building a lot of capabilities that you're telling and then you're also enabling a lot of companies you know, we talked to your ceo chris koopman and talk about kind of ecosystem and the number of companies that turn to marvell as their partner yes. to develop these custom silicon off-the-shelf capabilities so that they can participate in this AI data center growth is significant. And we're talking about big, important companies. Some of these companies are the ones that are announcing these next generation. It's with Marvell at their side. And I think that's a really important uh, you know, footnote, Rogue, because yes. you guys are do you're doing a lot. And so, and, and by the way, you can have all the GPU power in the world, but if you can't move the data, if you can't make it move fast enough, these cool apps and these workloads and these next generation enterprise tools, they don't they come to fruition. Yeah, they're definitely. I mean, think of it as if GPU or AI compute is like a brain, um, the whole network is a body, like a whole connectivity. And it, it, you, you all know any, any, especially without without the body, brain is not going to do much, right? So, so, so yeah. While brain is very important, but uh, but uh, it's it's very critical to have the right size of the rest of the network as well. And this is where uh, you know we are we are enabling all kind of uh, architectures out there to make it possible. Also, as I said, that the, the speed uh, of improvement, the cadence has increased so fast that no single company can do it all themselves. And that is where the value of partnership comes. Uh, we are partner with the GPU companies. We are also partner with the, with the hyperscalers to build their own custom compute. We are also partnering with other ecosystem, you know, to bring the you know improvements. Let's say in in, in packaging, uh, which is a very complex uh, uh, technology now to make uh, make these complex chips possible, or module vendors and so on and so forth. Absolutely, at times you are a well kept secret, but in many cases, when you're seeing these next generation architectures, Marvell had a part to play. So. We are enabling, we are, as I said, we are in front and center of this uh, this whole um, revolution which is going on. Rugged, thanks so much for taking a little time to talk about this and congratulations on all the progress. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in to the Futurum Tech Podcast. We're talking about the future of data center architecture and accelerated infrastructure and computing here on the show. Hit that subscribe button if you like what you heard. Hit that subscribe button anyway. We hope you'll stay with us for all our episodes, but for now, I gotta say goodbye. We'll see y'all later. <laughs>